Good evening everyone. Today we are going to see how to perform a mass balance and a material balance for a chemical reaction using stoichiometry. So this is going to be an interesting topic. Whenever we are going to perform any detailing for a manufacturing process, so the first thing that we have to do is perform mass balance and a material balance so that we can understand what type of byproducts are being formed and what is the theoretical amount of product is being formed and we can compare this theoretical values to the actual values which is uh, being developed in a laboratory and depending on that we can identify certain scope for improvement so today i am going to take a specific reaction and uh, i'll be not mentioning the compound names here so i'll be mentioning it with certain alphabets so a plus b plus c gives rise to AB2 and C. So this is a simple chemical reaction. So this is a simple reaction and first of all what we have to do is we have to write the molecular weight, the quantity in kgs and then we have to take this in kilomoles. So first of all write these things and then now try to write the molecular weights of the components. So here it's a 40 and let's say this is 30 and this is let's say 70 and coming to AB2 let's say it's 100 and then C this is going to be the same but because here in this case C is going to be the catalyst in our process and A and B are going to be the reactants and A is going to be the key starting material. Okay. And if you are able to see the specific reaction scheme or the equation, what we can understand is this is not balanced stoichiometrically. Why? Because here, if you are able to see in the product side, you got total two Bs, I mean two molecules of B. Whereas coming to this uh, input side, you got only one B. That means there is one deficit. So let's do one thing. Let's try to add two. Two is nothing but a stoichiometric coefficient here and as you are going to give two uh, molecules of V let's try to double this 30 so that means simply multiply 30 with 2 so here you got 60 and now let's try to check the mass balance so mass balance is nothing but so balancing the molecular weights on both sides theoretically so so do this 40 plus 60 plus 70 so it's total 170 here and now let's come to the product side so this is going to be 100 plus 70 so this is total 170 that means we are able to see here on both sides the mass has been balanced so once the mass has been balanced so we can proceed further so this is the first step that is balancing the equation with respect to stoichiometric coefficients followed by doing the balancing of mass and the third step is let's try to write the quantities which are given in the process so the quantity let's say it is 65 kg this is 100 kg and this is 5 kg right because c is going to be the catalyst and now let's try to calculate the kilo moles so kilo moles is nothing but weight in cases divided by molecular weight so 65 divided by 40 and similarly 100 divided by 60 and here 5 divided by 70 and now after doing this we need to identify the limiting reactant and the excess reactant so out of this three the limiting reactant is going to be a why because if you are able to compare the kilo moles the kilo moles of A is going to be less compared to B and here in this case I will be not comparing C why because C is going to be the catalyst and there is no elemental contribution of C towards the product since there is no elemental contribution of C towards the product so this C is not going to be considered okay let's make a note of this so let's say this is limiting reactant and the limiting reactant is going to be a so automatically what will happen is the excess reactant is the remaining 
nothing but b so this is how we need to write and once you have identified the excess reactant okay uh, let's put it aside so once you have identified the limiting reactant then automatically what will happen is the product which is going to be formed on the reactant side sorry on the product side is going to be having the same moles equal to that of the limiting reactant so here the limiting reactant is a and i will be taking the same moles of a here and coming to the other quantity that is c so c is nothing but a catalyst so catalyst is something which is going to enhance the rate of reaction but it is not going to have any elemental contribution towards the product formation so the same moles which are being taken in the reactant side is going to be applicable for the catalyst on the product side also okay and now let's we need to calculate the quantity here so the quantity is going to be molecular weight multiplied with kilo moles so similarly this is the case here and now let's try to perform the material balance so material balance is nothing but adding up the quantities of input and equating it to the output quantities so it is totally 170 on the reactant side and let's try to check on the product side now so this is going to be 162.5 plus 5 kg so this is only 167.5 so here on a left side that is the reactant side you got 170 on on the right side that is the product side you got only 167.5 which is due to the leftover quantity of excess reactant so here the excess reactant is b so let's try to make this so the excess reactant and take the same moles which are i mean same molecular weight which is mentioned in the reactant side so it is 60 and then the excess reactant moles is going to be uh, instead of that let's mention this as excess b okay the moles of excess b is going to be the excess reactant moles minus the limiting reactant moles and now again we need to calculate the quantity so it is nothing but a molecular weight multiplied with the kilo moles that is 2.5 let's now try to add up this so the products weight plus the unreacted or the excess weight so it is 170 so if you are able to see this is going to be similar to the top the reactant weights which has been taken as input so this is how we need to perform a material balance so this is the mass balance it is nothing but a summing up the molecular weights of a balanced equation stoichiometric equation so once the mass balance is done then we need to take the practical quantities which are being taken for a reaction and depending on this we need to perform the material balance and during this we need to we need to identify what is a limiting reactant and what is a excess reactant and depending on that you are going to identify the excess reactant quantity also and then we need to add up the product quantity and then the excess reactant quality quantity so this is how we need to perform mass balance and material balance and if you have any questions on this please write us at pharma calci 823@gmail.com so thanks for watching our video if you like our video please subscribe to our channel and also please share it with your dear ones thanks